and ultimately we have uh, the yeah thyristors. These are the four important uh, types of uh, um, actuators what we will go into study in this concept. Okay, so with respect to this, first thing what we supposed to understand here is the the solenoids. So these solenoids, what are these solenoids and how these solenoids will go into work and what is the basic principle behind the working of the solenoid. This is what uh, we are going to discuss in this uh, first second slide of this. Solenoids is an electromechanical device. Electrical energy is used to magnetically to cause mechanical so this is the basic uh, definition of a solenoid. A solenoid is an electromechanical device in which electrical energy is converted into, is used to mechanically, uh, magnetically to cause mechanical movement. So electrical energy is used to magnetically cause mechanical movement. This is what we call it as a solenoid. So in the sense here, we have electrical energy, we have magnetic energy, we have mechanical energy. The conversion of electrical energy into mechanical energy through magnetic field. This is what the solar is. Basically, they are electromechanical devices. So, what is this electromechanical device consisting of this thing? <clears throat> a solenoid is a long wire bomb as a helix to produce a reasonably uniform magnetic field B. In the interior of the solenoid coils, then the solenoid carries a steady current I. Okay, when the coils are closely placed, spaced, each term can approximate it as a circular loop, and net magnetic field B is the vector sum of the fields resulting from all the terms. Inside the solenoid, magnetic field lines are nearly parallel, uniformly distributed, and close together, indicating that magnetic field is uniform. The magnetic the field lines between the terms tends to cancel. But, uh, this is the diagram what we are showing over here. So what does it shows? The the solenoid it is consisting of a long wire, wound, long wire, which is the wound in the form of an helix. And the purpose of making it as helix to produce reasonably uniform magnetic. So, uniformly magnetic field in the interior of the solenoid coils, when the solenoid carries a steady current. In the sense, when a current flows through a wire, a long wire, and long wire, it is being formed into an helix. Okay? So, it produces a uniform magnetic field inside the coil. Okay? And these coils are very closely spaced and uh, they each term can be approximated as a circular loop. And hence, the net magnetic field is the vector sum of the fields resulting from all the terms. Okay. And a very important thing here is these field lines inside the solenoid, the field lines are parallel, they are uniformly distributed and they are close together. So that what it is indicates is magnetic field is uniform. The magnetic field lies between the turns ends to cancel each other. This is the diagram what we are showing over here. Okay, so the magnetic field outside the solar knot is non-uniform non -uniform and B. The field at exterior points such as T or B because current elements on the upper portion tends to cancel the current elements in the lower terms. So this is what it will be showing over here. So this is the solenoid coil. Okay. So inside the coil see here, so the magnetic field, and this is exterior and this is interior. What is there in the blue? What you can see the direction is the magnetic field. Okay. So when the current passes through these coils, okay the magnetic field will be produced. So, a steady current causes a uniform magnetic field. 
And all these magnetic fields are parallel and they are uniformly distributed within the inside the solenoid coil. Inside the solenoid coil. See, this is another one now. It is, it is the vertical shape and it is the horizontal shape. Okay? So these two things you can observe easily. It is just, just like electromagnetic. Okay, so solenoid coils which are forming in the form of a ellipse or in the form in the form, in the form of an helix, they will form uh, the magnetic field when the steady current flows through it. And uh, these uh, uh, magnetic fields are uh, is the sum of, it is a vector sum of all the magnetic fields resulting from the each coil. Okay, and these magnetic fields are uh, <coughs> Parallel to each other and they are uniformly distributed. This is what uh, the diagram what it is being shown you over here. Yeah, this is just a tutorial representation. It is a solenoid, it is a coil wound into a tightly packed helix. In physics, the term solenoid refers to a long, thin loop of wire and wrapped around a metallic core. So, just look at this coils. So, how it is being uh, uh, looped actually within the pack in the form of an helix and uh, it will be wrapped around a metallic core. So, metal you will do this to wind it or knock it over uh, over the core. It is wrapped it around that core, which produces a magnetic field when electric current is positive. So, something. So once you pass the steady current through this uh, wire, it produces a magnetic field. So this is uh, the types of solenoids. There are two types of solenoids. One is the AC solenoid, other one is the DC solenoid. But the AC solenoid is a very uh, not commonly used type of solenoids. Because of uh, noise damping and uh, uh, overheating and failures. And that's the reason why and, uh, this type of solenoid requires great care to ensure precise alignment of plunger pole, face to straighter pole. Uh, face. So that's the reason why generally the uh, solenoids of AC types are not used. So most uh, Commonly used uh, type of solenoids is DC solenoid. So therefore, uh, uh, in this uh, syllabus, we are giving more prominence for DC solenoid rather than the AC solenoid. Yeah. <clears throat> Look at this is a DC solenoid. What we are showing here is this solenoid has capability of being modified in such a fashion. To prevent the pole faces from making contact at the end of the screw. This solenoid is have a capability of being modified in such a way that in such a fashion to prevent the pole faces from making contact where at the end of the screw. So in this solenoid, a slight gap between the pole pieces and the uh, pole pieces at the end of the screw have drastic effect. On improving overall life of the solenoid. So this is a, a solenoid, DC solenoid. This DC solenoid means the electric current what you going to pass through it is a DC current. It is a DC current. current. <coughs> and uh, this type of uh, solenoids uh, you can modify. You can have uh, to modify so that you can prevent four phases from. Uh, uh, making contact with the end of the spool. And so in DC solenoid, a slight gap between the pole pieces at the end of the stroke have a drastic effect on improving the overall life of the solenoid. This is the most important thing with respect to the DC solenoid. So basically, this DC solenoid consists of three important parts. One is a coil, second one is a field, and third one is a plunger. When you look at these things, so, a DC solenoid will have a coil. So, this is the coil that we are looking at here. 
oil and a plunger and a pin. This is something that I do. Yeah, what does it consist of? A coil. A coil is comprised of many tons of uh, tightly bound copper wire. So copper wire, this is this coil is made up of a copper wire, and uh, it consists of uh, number of tons which are uh, tightly bound. Okay, that is what we call it as the coil. So you can see here, you can see this uh, helical shaped uh, element here. That is what we call it as a coil, which is made up of a copper, okay? and uh, it is being worn tightly. Tightly, the consists of number of tons. You can have a number of tons, and but they are tightly worn. Okay, when DC current flows through this wire, it creates a strong magnetic flux path which flows around a coil and moves to its center in the downward shape. So this is what the magnetic field. So how magnetic field has been produced as a DC current pass through. So direct current pass through this. Okay. So it produces. So when a DC, when direct current passes through this coil or a wire, so it creates a strong magnetic field, magnetic field or magnetic flux path, which flows around. See, this is how the movement or the flow of a magnetic flux. You can see this. All the magnetic flux is flowing over here, okay, and it will form in the form of a donut shape. So donut shape. This is the shape of a donut. What there? So, the field, a halo cylindrical casing that surrounds the coil. So the, the second uh, element what we discussed is the field. So field is nothing but a halo cylindrical casing that surrounds the coil. See. Inside there is a coil, and this is been surrounded by a casing. We call it as a field. It's just white. What is in the white color? A field. The field, a halo cylindrical casing. This is a halo cylindrical casing which surrounds the coil. Since the magnetic flux path flows more easily through iron and steel. This tubular casing adds strength to magnetic field. So again, this uh, <coughs> uh, cylindrical casing made with uh, either with iron or steel. Okay. So this tubular casing adds strength to the magnetic field. So, so it will give uh, more strength for the movement of uh, the magnetic field. And the plunger. Round in the shape with a positive cone on one end. The plunger provides a large area for flux transfer and better force characteristics. So, plunger is the third part what we are talking about. So, plunger round in shape. It is having a cylindrical shape with a positive cone on one end. So one positive cone will be there. The plunger provides large area for flux transfer and better force characteristics. The purpose of having a plunger is to provide the large area for flux transfer, large area for flux transfer, and to have better force characteristics. See in the figure, you can see the blue that is a purple color element. What you can see that is basically it is a plunger. So this is a plunger. This is the white color. It is a, a casing or a field. We can call it as which is in the green color. It is a coil which is bound in the form of an X. Okay. When energized, DC solenoids plunger moves in only one direction into the coil. We create a full solenoid type by attaching a hook outside the end of the plunger. It is a full type. Okay, so in the sense when energized, when energized, DC solenoid plunger moves in. It moves in only in one direction into the coil. We creates a full type solenoids by attaching a hook outside end of the plunger. So when you keep an uh, 
cook outside the end of a plunger and when you energize the plunger or a DC solenoid plunger, so the plunger will start moving in. As it moves in, so when you just attack, see this is how what they have shown it is a full tag. So here the plunger moves in. As it moves in, so the load will be it will act as a pull tag. It will pull. In the opposite way, so when push type solenoids we attach a push pin to the plunger conical. So other end, so other end of the plunger, if we add a load, so then it will act as a push tag. So as a, based upon uh, the requirement and the applications where we can uh, get it as a full type uh, solenoids or a push type solenoids. This is what the working of uh, a solenoid. And the, after understanding the working principle of a solenoid, then we move on to the applications of solenoids. The solenoids are used in variety of fields. Basically, they are used in locking applications, automotive applications, medical applications, railway applications, like this. There are plenty of uh, applications are there for uh, solar. This is a very important question from the examination point of view. And locking applications means the solenoids are frequently used in locking mechanisms. So locking mechanisms which might be including a door locking in hotels, offices and secure areas, rolling stock, tracks, signals and power. Hotels, offices and secure areas, even in vending machines, remote access systems, turnstiles, car park and access barriers. So the most important application of solenoids is uh, locking application. So locking might be a door locking, Either it might be in the hotels or in the offices or in secure areas or even vending machines, remote access systems, uh, turnstiles, car parking, access barriers where the access is uh, uh, not possible. In such cases where we can have uh, the solenoids can be used as a for locking of the gate. The list is extensive. Latching can be mechanical. And the main function is applicable to single solenoids, bistable, bistable, two directional solenoids, and holding solenoids in many cases with or without springs. Of course, there are plenty of uh, applications where you will say and find the locking. So, locking is very much uh, required for everywhere. So, only few of the things they have been mentioned is at the top. And uh, of course, this uh, latching. Latching or locking can be magnetic or mechanical, and uh, the main function can suit the application to include single acting solenoids or bistable solenoids, two directional solenoids, holding solenoids in many cases, with or without the springs. This is what uh, we call it as the locking application. When it comes to the automotive applications, the other applications for solenoids include uh, petrol cap locking in car entertainment release mechanisms, anti vibration engine mounting, air conditioning control, and security systems. Automotive applications are not just for cars, they supply solenoids for integration into joystick control for agricultural machinery, for lorry systems, and many other automotive applications. There are just far too many to be listed here. Of course, even uh, most important thing in the case of a starters in uh, automobiles, so we use uh, the solenoids. Okay. So in the case of automotive income, so it will have a petrol cap locking and uh, in for entertainment release mechanisms, anti-vibration engine mounting, air conditioning controlling and security system. Of course, it is not only for car, even they use it for uh, agricultural machineries, uh, lorry systems, and uh, other uh, automotive applications. And next comes the uh, railway applications. 
the applications within the railway industry the applications within the railway industry applications within the railway industry are particularly diverse including functions on locomotives rolling stock tracks signals and power distribution as well as the conventional uses in maintenance and building safety interlock or passengers or those use solenoid operated mechanism that is controlled remotely by the train man so in the case of railway applications so they use it for uh, locomotives functions of on locomotives rolling stocks tracks signals and power distribution as well as the conventional uses and of course they can be used in a safety interlock also on the passenger car tools as a solenoid operated mechanism and i developed a special solenoid for operation of a fire extinguisher so means a solenoid operated fire extinguishers are also there okay and of course uh, applications will call for uh, very high force for the relevant size to operate the jets of the fire support such as fire suppression system so these are all the five few uh, applications we can see for uh, solar lights especially in the case of our railway applications and they uh, are now ultimately we have uh, industrial applications where the use for solar lights in industry is extensive anyway the electrical power is required to achieve a movement becomes an application for a solar so in the sense electric pulse power is required to achieve a movement so in the sense any applications especially in uh, industries so wherever you feel the movement is being triggered by means of an electrical power in such uh, case uh, we require a solar pulse Uh, general examples we are using in locking, cutting, clamping, punching, positioning, diverting, holding, or rotating. These are some of the examples where we can see the electrical energy is required to achieve the movement. So, in such cases, we make use of uh, the solar lights. Okay, the range of standard or modified standard solar lights from the solar light company will satisfy most of these applications in the sense so there are different companies they are manufacturing uh, this solar lights and uh, those solar lights those uh, solar lights of the company will satisfy most of these applications this is very important from the examination point of view why because uh, <coughs> the applications of solar lights it is uh, quite important not only from the exam Project work where you want to have uh, to show the or apply this uh, movement electrical uh, movement uh, using electrical energy. In such cases, definitely we require uh, this solar. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. The next thing, uh, the second type of actuators is the relays. Yeah, I think you might have heard this the word relays in somewhere might be in electrical engineering or whatever it might be. So in this case, relays. So we discuss how these relays are used as an actuator. Okay. Yeah. What is basically a relay means? A relays are switches. They are switches. Basically, they are switches. that open and close circuits electromechanically or electronically the principle of operation of a relay is uh, either it might be electromechanical or it might be electronic only and uh, they are switches relays or switches and they open and close circuits so whenever we require to open or whenever we require to close the circuits these relays will act as a switching so from open to close or close to open and it happens either electromechanically or only by electronically 
These relays control one electrical circuit by opening and closing contact with the other circuit. When a relay contact is normally open, there is no open contact with the relay is not energized. In the sense, these relays control one electrical circuit by opening and closing contacts with other circuits. When a relay contact is normally open, there is an open contact when the relay is not energized. When the relay contact is normally closed, there is a closed contact when the relay is not in it. This is a very important thing. So when the relay is not energized, when the relay is not energized, when the contact is normally open, means when the relay is when the relay contact is normally open, there is an open contact when relay is not energized. When relay is normally closed, when the relay contact is normally closed, there is a closed contact when the relay is not energized. In either case, applying electric current to the contacts will change this. So what I mean to say here is, when you don't uh, pass, when the electric current is not passed, Okay, so the relay contact will remain open, and when it is closed, it will remain closed. Means they are not energized, and as this means not passing the electric current. But when electric current passes through this, right, their status will go into change. Status will go into change in the sense. Initially, when the contact is normally open, and when you energize it, it will close. And vice versa, what happens in the case of closed state? When initially it is closed, and when you pass an electric current, so then it will go into gets opened. So this is what they say. So relays as until unless it has been energized, it does not change the state. It remains in the original state. Once it gets energized, it will get changed to the other state. This is what the meaning of this state. Relays consist of an electromagnet and also a set of contact. A relay is used when uh, a circuit is to be controlled at a low power signal. Relays are often grouped together or with other components that uses. Relay consists of electromagnetic and also a set of points. So basically, it works on electromechanical need. So therefore, we require uh, electromagnets. And of course, it needs to have uh, some contacts with it there. And uh, when relay is used, a relay is used when a circuit is to be controlled at a low power signal. Means uh, when the power supply is uh, very low, very low, so we can uh, use relays to control. And of course, these relays can also be uh, grouped together or with other components like uses. Relays have two circuits, a control circuit and a load circuit. So two circuits you can see. <coughs> this is the basic design or operation. I will just complete this. Okay. Uh, diode and upwards I will go to take. I will complete this first and upwards. Uh, in the next session, I will take uh, IOS. The basic design or operation. A simple electromagnetic relay consists of a coil of wire wrapped around a soft iron board. Wrapped around a soft iron board. An iron yoke which provides a low reluctance spot for magnetic flux a movable iron armature and one or more sets of contacts. So basically, this uh, relay will consisting of a copper wire, a coil, we can say it is a coil, uh, which is wrapped around, which is uh, wrapped around A soft iron core. Okay, this 
iron loop which provides a low reluctance path for magnetic that means uh, the iron loop it does not uh, relax the means it is not it provides no reluctance the magnetic flux a movable iron armature so you can see all over here this is the yoke okay this is the yoke and uh, this is the coil you can see this coil over here a coil of wrapped around a wire or uh, a coil of wire which is wrapped around a soft iron core okay and a movable iron armature is there okay and then contacts the armature is hinged to the yoke and mechanically linked to one or more sets of moving contacts in the sense the armature which we have uh, shown over here is been linked mechanically to one or more sets of moving contacts and it is held in place by spring so that when the relay is de-energized there is an air gap in the magnetic circuit it is held in place by a spring so that when the relay is de-energized there is an air gap in the magnetic field circuit in the sense when you just stop uh, passing the current through the relay okay means it gets uh, degenerates the energy is temper the energy is okay so there will be a gap in the magnetic field so then there is a spring which you going to hold in this condition one or two sets of contacts in a relay is closed and other set is open so how basic uh, relay will go into what okay we can see this yoke a coil a spring armature and the contact types of relays basically relays are two of two types either electromagnetic or mechanical or solid state relays both accomplish the same result but the physical structure and functionality makes them different one electromagnetic relays emr in electromechanical relays contacts are open or closed by magnetic force by magnetic force basic parts and functions of electromagnetic relays include frame coil armature and contacts in the what is this and the second type is a solid state relays we call it as ssr ssr solid state relay and emr is electromechanical relay in solid state relays there are two there are no contacts and switching is totally electronic it consists of an input circuit and a control circuit so of course the description is not required for us because it is not in the universe it's just only the operation of relays and the types of relays and their the application that's the only thing what they have been discussed in the syllabus so for before that no need to discuss this emr this is same emr is the same thing with here so what you are seeing here is the emr from the chemical today and of course solid state relays is not required for our syllabus so we are not discussing it next comes applications amplifying a digital signal switching a large amount of power with a small operating power detecting and isolating faults faults on transmission and distribution lines by opening and closing circuit breakers isolating the controlling circuit from the control circuit when uh, the two are at a different potential in logic functions and in time delay functions so these are some of the applications what you can uh, see from the relays means uh, it amplifies the digital signal switching a large amount of power with a small of op operating power means it requires only small operating power and it will get converted into a large uh, operating power by just uh, amplification and uh, it detecting and isolating faults on transmission distribution line in the sense that whenever there is a Uh, for in the distribution on transmission and distribution it detects and isolates means it detects the fault and isolates the circuits by the by opening or closing the circuit breakers isolating the control circuit from the control circuit when two or different potential in the sense uh, 
it uh, works as an uh, controlling circuit for isolation from the control circuit when two are at different potential when two points are two ends are at different potentials so it will go into create or it will go into isolate the voltage circuit in logic functions and of course also in time delay functions these are some of the applications of uh, relays next comes the advantages of relays it is used as a safety switch to allow a circuit with a small current to which uh, switch and a circuit that will have a large current flow through it it minimizes the amount of damage to the system during a fault a small control signal controls a, a large load control or voltage decreased electrical noise when switching totally silent operation it is used as a safety switch most important thing is relays are used as a safety switch to allow a circuit with a small current through to which switch a current that will have a large current flowing in the sense so when a large amount of current flows through this so this relays will act as a safety devices so that it allows only the small amount of current to flow so that is what we were talking about uh, any uh fault in the transmission fault in the transmission so it will act as a safety switch for us and the second one is minimize the amount of damage to the system during the fault so if anything happens to the uh system it will uh, uh, minimize the damage of amount of damage small control signal controls a large load current or voltage decreased electrical noise when switching totally silent operation so these are some of the advantages of uh, the relays okay okay my dear students we will have our 5 minutes break okay so later i will going to continue with this okay So please uh, take five minutes break and just uh, rejoin to me. So it is eleven uh, fifty now. So I want you to be there eleven fifty five. Everybody should be there. Yeah? I am going to start the second session.